From Pearson International, this is City TV Everywhere. Tonight, High Marks Honors. Tonight, Jose Macron. Tonight, a Cowboy Junkies fix. Good evening. Tonight, no one will budge. Teachers, school boards, deadlocked. Kids still on the outside. It's a demonstration in front of this board office to show the board that the teachers, elementary teachers here in Peel mean business. They don't like what they have done to their collective agreement and they don't like what they intend to do to their working conditions. And they're not going to take it. The strike vote here in Peel will be taken next week. And uh, next week is the first time that this board wants to get back at the table as well. So it's, it's not a good indication of any sincere effort by this board to resolve the problem, which is what the teachers want to do. That's the view tonight from Peel, where teachers rallied outside the public board. More than 133,000 kids across the GTA have been out of school since September 8th. With new rumblings about back-to-work legislation and who would oppose it, tonight York Region parents are talking about taking matters into their own hands. What can we do with the kids in the classroom, working together and cooperatively to get this resolved? That's my yeah. aim, and that's why I'm here tonight, to see whether or not we can, together, parents, teachers, uh, ministry, um, ministry says that everybody's pointing fingers. I'm saying let's join hands, let's get this thing resolved, and let my kids go back to school tomorrow. More than 100 concerned parents met tonight trying to figure out what to do with the kids. There's talk about following the lead of St. Michael's Academy in Thornhill, where parents have been teaching classes. From Queen's Park, politicians are jostling for a stance on back-to-work legislation. If at some point in time the Education Relations Commission makes a finding that the student's year is going to be in jeopardy if they don't get back in the classroom, then I will support back-to-work legislation at that point in time. But until that happens, I think it's important for the parties involved, teachers and trustees, to work as hard as they can to get a settlement. While the Liberals will conditionally support back-to-work legislation tonight, the NDP says they'll do everything they can to stop it. As for the Tories, the Premier still says forcing teachers back to school is a last resort. So, had enough talk? Should the Harris government act immediately to end this thing? I think that uh, the, che the teachers have a valid point, and I think that for the most part, uh, if there's no intervention as yet, there's not going to be. So, there's something going on deeper than we know. And as far as I'm concerned, there are a lot of children that are going to suffer because of it. Kids need to learn. Uh, there's a lot of kids out there that are preparing for university and college, and they need to, to get their education going. The kids have to go back to school. I mean, people who are in OAC and have things to do later are, are kind of... Uh, being hurt right now, so I think they should. Since there's been no real movement between teachers and the boards, the same kids that were out of school today are out tomorrow. On the brighter side, things are looking up for one young scholar in the city. Monita Rajpal will have that story a little later on. A few folks on the lam from the law tonight. First, 39-year-old Earl Gordon McCauley skipped out on a day pass from a Kingston prison with a 16-year-old girl working as a church volunteer with inmates. Cops think they're in Toronto and not likely collecting for the Sally Ann. He's a uh, violent uh, uh, bank robber that was serving some 30 years plus. I think the sentence speaks for itself. Amanda Weatherby uh, was in the Kingston area working for a church agency on a voluntary basis. And uh, through that came in contact uh, with uh, Macaulay, uh, who was on an unescorted pass. The repeat offender unit ran into another wanted face tonight. Kenneth William Chester's West End visit came to an abrupt end. He was supposed to be at the Beaver Creek minimum lockup in Bracebridge. Charges laid tonight in last weekend's fatal police chase in Etobicoke. 36-year-old Derek Thomas, who was injured in the crash, was charged with criminal negligence causing death and robbery in hospital where he's recovering. Thirty-six-year-old Paul Cabral was killed instantly when his van exploded in flames after being hit by a stolen car that ran a red light. A spokesperson of the Special Investigations Unit says investigators have yet to speak with the officer involved in the pursuit. And there was another police chase, a brief one this afternoon, along West End Streets after a car failed to stop for two officers. Two people were taken into custody as part of a drug investigation. Thank you. 
At Metro Hall, ongoing debate about making police pursuits safer and looking at alternatives other than expensive helicopters. Perhaps there's not enough of an understanding of all the alternatives out there. There's a combination of different alternatives. Um, I think what we have to do is look at every alternative. And one alternative is the stop stick. Its makers claim the device doesn't cut through tires, but allows a slow, safe release of air, cost about $400 each. Got a political hot pursuit tonight for Jean Chrétien. Prime Minister still being dogged by opposition claims he ordered a crackdown on student protesters. PM wants the protesters out. Now that PM wasn't me, and it wasn't the minister. Of That's right. It's you. Sorry that uh, some people uh, have the problem with the police at that moment. Nobody wished these things, and it's why there is an inquiry. Tonight, Gretchen is brushing aside RCMP memos suggesting his office played a key role in security for the APEC summit. The crackdown saw Mali's pepper spray students demonstrating against Indonesian strongman Suharto. Gretchen may still face questions by a police complaints commission, but tonight he won't say if he'd obey a subpoena to appear. Big controversy outside Parliament Hill tonight. Thousands of gun control opponents rallied for four hours protesting the new registry law, forcing three million gun owners to account for nearly seven million weapons. We have assembled to scrap the needless, ineffective, and wasteful national gun registry. The law was supposed to take effect in October, but computer problems are delaying the process. The central data bank should be phased in by 2003, and owners must be licensed by 2001. That federal Tory leadership race going great guns in the GTA tonight. Most of the candidates pressing PC flesh at the Toronto Congress Center. And I hope to convince the party to go back to its historic opposition to free trade with the United States, an opposition that this party had for 120 years. David Orchard's dragging his decade-plus-long battle against NAFTA to the limelight, but he's got a lot of followers. People handling Huey Siegel and Joe Clark, who couldn't make this stop tonight, aren't laughing off the Saskatchewan farmer. And we aren't laughing at him either. David Orchard is my guest on Daily Live Nightly, only on CP24 after the news. Your chance to hear him out and sound him out. Call us and talk to one of the Tory hopefuls. Well, an academic hopeful is getting a very special gift tonight. Monita Raj Paul with a happy story of higher education tonight. That's right, Mark. Thank you. Kay Baxter, Jamaica's Consul General to Toronto from 1987 to 1992, passed away earlier this year. Her memory, however, lives on, especially for one outstanding young individual who tonight became the first to receive the Kay Baxter Memorial Scholarship Award. Brian, I'd like to present this uh, scholarship to you on behalf of the Toronto Sun and the Independent United Order of Solomon and the Jamaican Consul General in memory of a very fine lady, uh, Kay Baxter. We have two other scholarship at the University of the West Indies in Jamaica, so we think it would be very appropriate to do one in Toronto in honor of Kay Baxter. This being the first Kay Baxter Memorial Scholarship here in Toronto, it had to be awarded to someone with exceptional qualities. The recipient, Ryan O'Donnell, is a fourth-year computer science student at the U of T. And get this, he's only 18. I've been, uh, been a few years ahead in school for a while now, and I've just uh, proceeded through and worked at school as I came naturally, and things just sort of worked out for me. We contact the computer science department and they were simply unanimous in their selection as you've seen Ryan is an exceptional student and he's truly the top student in computer science so really the decision was quite easy for the department. What's his grade point average? Do we know, do we, do we know that? Well, I'd rather you ask him that. <laughs> What's your grade point average? Do they want to know? Yeah. You are think it's so brilliant, they so young, you know. So, Ryan, congratulations Thank you very much. to be the first recipient. Nice Ryan plans Except to go to graduate to school next year and he's hoping to use the $2,000 scholarship money to help pay his tuition from the Jamaican consulate. I'm Monita Rajpal for City Pulse tonight. A high-flying lesson tonight in Greenpeace activism. A 10 by 20 meter banner was strapped across the Niagara Falls Observation Tower to protest destruction of old growth forests in North America. Uh, blowing around a little bit, uh, they're just trying to uh, anchor it, uh, but two of the climbers have uh, repelled down. Strong winds forced the four Greenpeacers to call off the swinging antics. They were taken into police custody, no word on charges. All 
the shore that's going ashore. These hardy adventurers couldn't wait to get on to land in the arms of friends and relatives after 87 days at sea, crossing the icy North Atlantic in a replica of a Viking ship. The eight-man crew retraced Sailor Leif Erikson's voyage of discovery to North America about 1,000 years ago. The boat was propelled by an 11-meter canvas sail and oars, a distance of nearly 3,000 kilometers. No modern navigation equipment for this lot. They relied on the sun and stars to chart their course. Dodging icebergs is one thing. Imagine sailing anywhere near a full-blown hurricane like George. At least 13 people in the Caribbean are now dead because of it. Puerto Rico in shambles power out many areas, damage in the millions. George is bearing down on the Dominican Republic in Haiti tonight because the eye of the storm is over land. The top winds are now down to 150 kilometers an hour. There are fears it could rip into the Florida Keys by sometime on Friday. Here, just doggone cool tonight. A check of the weather now. Here's Harold O'Sane. Hey, I got my little jacket on. You'll need your jacket on for the morning ride into work because even though we may see a brief shower overnight, the temperature's going down to about 5 degrees, so it's going to be a chilly one in the morning. Let's check sports now. Here's Catherine. Thanks, Harold. Coming up, the feathers were flying down at Sky Dome. Jays and Orioles. We'll see how Boston did against Tampa. McKenney with the Leafs and more. But for now, it's out to that funky set they're building out in the parking lot. And Glenn with an early look at entertainment. Glenn. Thanks, Catherine. As you can see, our City TV parking lot has been completely transformed to accommodate Thursday's much-anticipated Much Music Video Awards. I'll have all the uh, details on that coming up a little later. But right now, it's back inside for Mark. All right, thanks, Glenn. Still ahead on City Pulse tonight, big bank mergers. Bay Street hears from a key player from Ottawa, while West End residents sound off over a local bank branch closure. Libya City Biz next. Wow, I'm surfing the net. I'm emailing halfway around the world. Wow. Introducing the most online from Sprint Canada, an internet service so easy everyone can use it. It's so easy, it's amazing. Even I can do it. Get unlimited internet access for just $22.95 per month. Wow. Your first month free. Wow. And a 24-hour helpline. Wow. Cool. Amazing. Call toll-free 1-888-232-EASY. It's so easy, it's amazing. This is easier than my VCR. Kids aren't just kids. They're our hope and our future. And it's our responsibility to put their needs first, which is why we set out to raise education standards with caps on average class sizes and a relevant new curriculum. The first to be taught in every school in the province. Then province-wide testing will check that the new high standards are being met. It would have been easier to just leave things alone, but kids are important. Their needs come first. A message from the Government of Ontario. I've been on my wings all day. Time for today's little indulgence. Billy. 60% less fat than butter or margarine, and it tastes like paradise. Oh, crumbs. Crumbs. No. Oh. Nobody looks there anyway. <laughs> With 60% less fat than butter or margarine, Philadelphia cream cheese is a little taste of heaven. This place is a mess. Can you believe we're doing this again? With Jeeps and trucks like these, and offers like Dodge Ram 0% financing, and Jeep Grand Cherokee 0% financing, things just could get out of hand. I think we're gonna need more cars. One at a time, please. Chrysler's 1998 clear out event ends September 30th. I think we're gonna need more cars. City Biz is brought to you by the Chrysler Minivan. Sooner or later, everybody needs a minivan. Tonight, residents in the Junction Triangle take on the TD Bank over the closure of a local branch. We're upset because they, they've chosen to uh, close our branch here at Dundas and Medlin and transfer all of our accounts to uh, a branch at Dundas and Runnymede, which is totally outside of the community. This is a landmark. This has been open ever since I was like, yay, hi. This whole idea of mergers, this is one of the reasons uh, that mergers don't work, is because uh, by merging, what you do is uh, the banks close down uh, some of their banks throughout the city, throughout the country. 
And tonight, while residents were protesting, Ottawa's point man on the mergers was in town. Job reductions will be contained within attrition levels. We're saying that uh, no small town, a rural area where uh, the two banks are there are going to see a loss of service as a result of the mergers. Mergers should be permitted to proceed. Where the Minister of Finance is satisfied that markets will remain competitive and that the transaction is in the public interest. Finally tonight, the hotel biz wants us to know how much it contributes to the economy. According to this study, 22,000 jobs and $600 million in annual tax revenue. While the return on equity is now at least positive, where four years ago it was red ink, it still isn't a sufficient return to ensure that owners are earning a fair return so that they will continue to make the investment uh, to, uh, to upgrade and maintain their properties. And our main focus is public policy. So the purpose of the study is primarily to use as an education tool uh, for people in public office or uh, uh, the bureaucracy, etc. Just how much money do the hotels generate in total? According to this report, it adds up to $1.2 billion. With the ins and outs of money, I'm Libby Snymer for City Pulse tonight. Sports is nice with Catherine. Is this like your office and everything? This yeah, is cool. we've moved. Wow. Isn't it neat? Yeah. We had several artists working on this all day long. Yeah, Looks I good, doesn't it? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> the Jays took some heat for picking up Jose Canseco in the offseason. Several media types questioned his rather unsavory past, but let's face it, he's the best offensive player on this team. Chris Carpenter against uh, 13 game winner Mike Mussina. First inning, and Mussina's not so scary, not when you've got tree trunks for arms. Jose Canseco rips homer number 45, a two run shot. A career high for him makes it two zip Jays. Then a scary moment. Tony Fernandez hits one deep. Willie Green goes into the wall like a Claude Lemieux cross check. He was taken to hospital but was neurologically sound. I don't know. Then in the seventh, it's Jose Canseco again, bettering his own personal best with homer number 46 off Mussina again, leaving Jose one back at George Bell's franchise record. Jays cruise to a 7-3 win. Carpenter improves to 12-7. and As for number 46, it's not luck, it's a science, you know. I noticed a pattern uh, with him that he really, every time he throw a fastball inside, which uh, the previous everybody jammed jammed with, he broke my bat, he'd come back with a slider or a cutter. And I just told myself, stay back, because you're probably going to get a cutter here. I stayed back and hit it for the score. Pouring rain for Tampa in Boston tonight, but baseball players are tough. <laughs> Second inning, Darren Bragg doubles. That scores no more Garcia Pera, and even Troy Leary sneaks home. And it's 2 0 Boston. They went on a tear tonight, racked up 11 runs. Meanwhile, Tampa having a little trouble defensively. Pretty routine fly ball from Miguel Cairo. All right, the rain got in his face. Smeared his mascara, perhaps. Darren Bragg scores from third. Boston kills him 11-2 to stay three games ahead of RJs. As for the home run race, McGuire in the cards, hosting Houston. McGuire going for number 66. Oh, it must have been the win. No runs for McGuire tonight, although his cards shut out Houston for nothing. Meanwhile, Sammy Sosa and the Cubs are in Milwaukee. Second inning, Mickey Morandini with a sack fly. Sammy Sosa makes a run for it. The throw's good, but Sosa slides under Bobby Hughes and actually got the wind knocked out of him. Way to go, Hughes, but he was fine. Cubs over the Brewers 5-2. The Mets lost, so it's back to a dead heat for that NL wild card. The Yankees swept a doubleheader today against Cleveland and are just three wins away from setting a new AL record for wins in a season. To hockey now, the Pittsburgh Penguins' best blue liner, Darius Kasparaitis, still doesn't know how long he'll be out. His knee is so swollen, they can't get a good read on the MRI. Meanwhile, the perfectly healthy, at least physically, Peter Nedved made it official today. He's not playing for the Pens and their measly $4 million a year offer. He signed with the IHL's Las Vegas Thunder. And back here in T.O., McKenney says, Leafs good. No team's ever won a Stanley Cup in training camp, but undefeated's better than 0-2. Much better. This team vastly improved in all departments.
Alex Potvin is having his best camp in years. He'll get to start in Edmonton tomorrow night. Todd Warner and Derek King have been scoring some goals. They'll get a rest. Matt Sundin will try to make up the difference in between Aaron Brand and Jason Padolan. The back end's been the big surprise, even without Matthew Schneider. Nothing fancy. Stand up at the line, clear out the front, and move the puck. Nobody does it better than the veteran, Sylvain Cote. Well, he's a real solid defenseman. Uh, I think uh, word around the league when you haven't played with a guy like that is he's uh, fairly offensive-minded. But in the three weeks that I've been here, I've, I found out he's uh, really quite capable in his own end, and, uh, and he, uh, he does take the body. This is a fresh start for every team in the league, and whatever you have accomplished last year is, uh, has nothing to do with this year. So, uh, you know, right now we're all equal. We're all starting in first place, and, uh, you know, uh, it's going to... You know, it's going to be who's going to stay on top uh, you know, for the whole season. I'm Jim McKenney for City Pulse tonight. Alex Zanardi will be doing his victory donuts in an F1 car next year. The two-time car champ is replacing Jacques Villeneuve at Williams. Villeneuve is moving to the new bar team because F1 is where all the money is, Mark. Yes, indeed it is. Yeah. Yes. This is sort of neat. We can mess up other people's desks because those five alive you, people mess mine up every day. be any closer? I know, we are You're sort of You're frightening close, me. Yeah. Always felt close to you. Uh, <laughs> when there's entertainment after a short break, stay with us. Oh, oh, oh look at that. Oh, cheesy. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> surprise that. Mug before. I've never seen the mug before. Well, coming up next, our City TV parking lot ain't what it used to be, and the cowboy junkies are better than ever. the brighter the smiles. Introducing new Duracell Ultra with a concentrated power force to get more life out of your high-tech devices. New Duracell Ultra. More power, more life. Fido introduces a new handset so irresistible, it's inspired curiosity in some rather unexpected circles. Small, easy to operate, and extremely easy to look at, the new Nokia 5190 is sure to leave you taken aback. At only $75 for PCS or $150 for dual mode with national coverage, our newest Fido is bound to please, well, everyone. This is the country. Motomaster works here. This is the climate. Motomaster works here. These are the roads. Motomaster works here. No one understands the unique driving challenges of Canada better than we do. From oil to tires to batteries and more, Motomaster products are tested to handle anything this climate can dish out. This is the country. This is the brand. Motomaster works here. Exercise in the comfort of home with the help of Fitness Depot. Our expert staff can help you choose from a huge selection of brand name home fitness equipment all at the guaranteed lowest prices in North America. So why do it the hard way? Exercise is easy, the Fitness Depot way. Who's this? 007? Our vision here to wipe out half the eastern seaboard. We're not gonna make it! You are! Executive decision, Thursday at 8 on Great Movies. In entertainment tonight, setting the stage for the 1998 Munch Music Video Awards, is Glenn live in the parking lot. Oh, a lot of activity going on here, Mark, in the parking lot. Getting ready for Thursday's Much Music Video Awards. I will see performances by the likes of the Goo Goo Dolls, Bare Naked Ladies, The Philosopher Kings, uh, Love Inc., Rascals, Big Wreck, just to name a few, and some appearances by members of Aqua, Backstreet Boys, and Jason Priestley. And to tell us about this year's themes, we have, uh, this year's theme, rather, we have uh, Hayden Sim uh, Simmons. What can you tell us about uh, what we're going to have to enjoy on Thursday? Oh, it's going to be exceptional. It's got, uh, looks like an urban wasteland, a, a jungle of the future. That's the thing. So lots of people have put in lots of hard work. Rico Bailey, Rebecca Fasica. Right. Lots of creative people here. Doing some spray can art back there. 
working around the clock. We've got a huge stage on this side, and there are going to be bands performing indoors as well, right? That's right. There's a set inside. There's going to be two sets inside as well, yeah. It's the only award show that doesn't have a seated audience and uh, podiums and the like, right? Uh, yeah, that's right. So I like it. People are moving, mingling, All right. a lot more social. So don't, don't miss that. It's on Much Music beginning at 8 o'clock on Thursday. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Continue your hard work. Cowboy Junkies could get a nomination next year at the Much Music Video Awards for their new video, Miles From Our Home, taken from their new CD of the same name. I spoke to lead singer Margot Timmins a little earlier about playing in front of a hometown crowd tonight at the Danforth Music Hall. Because it's family, you want it to work the way it should work. Has it always been that way, or, or just now with, with the release of this particular CD? Well, no. Um, you know, it's, it wasn't that, that way when we were a younger band, because you we were just playing the clubs and stuff, and, and family didn't come in those days. <laughs> um, no, it's only been that way since we started putting on more of a show with, with the whole lighting and having the crew and, and putting more of an investment in a, in a show. Modern dance junkies Grupo Corpo from Brazil fuse classical ballet traditions into their entertaining repertoire tonight until Saturday at the Premier Dance Theatre. And as we begin shopping for our winter clothes, the country's top designers are already showcasing their spring-summer 1999 collection at the matinee ready-to-wear show. Designers like Marilyn Brooks' uh, Hoax Couture and the award-winning uh, designer uh, Franco Mirabelli. <laughs> The matinee ready-to-wear show continues tomorrow, and the hard work continues all night long. Getting ready for Thursday's Much Music Video Awards here in the City TV parking lot. Mark, it's back to you inside. All right, thanks, Glenn. Weather heralds outside, too. A little chilly out there. I'll have the forecast after a short break. Two hours and a few minutes till the first day of fall, and boy, is it going to feel like it. Stay tuned. We're back after the Bell Canada Weather Shop, the eyes of Toronto. and prizes available, including 10 Ford Explorers. Harvey's makes your custom combo a beautiful thing. In business, there are all kinds of ways to save money, like cutting back on office space, sharing a phone line, or using smaller coffee cups. But now there's a smarter way to save money, new and improved, 
Express Post. It's guaranteed, reliable, and can normally save you about 33% on the cost of courier service. Plus, it goes to more Canadian cities the next business day than ever before. Express Post, the smart alternative from Canada Post. Dakota builds some of the toughest, most comfortable work boots you can buy. And you can only buy them at Canada's footwear experts. Mark's Work Warehouse. Closed captioning of this program is brought to you by Lotto 649. This Wednesday's Lotto 649 jackpot estimated at $10 million. Better have a slightly heavier jacket than the one I'm wearing right now. Only 11 degrees up here on the roof now. Still got a bit of a wind coming out of the northwest at 11 kilometers an hour. The humidity at 62% and the pressure, well, that's moving up from 101.7 kilopascals. Sunrise will be at 7.06 with sunset at 7.15. We got to a high of 19 today, but we're going to drop off to an overnight low of 5 degrees. Well, take a look at the satellite picture. We start off in the south, first of all, coming across the Gulf. You can see another depression in the southern Texas area. But over onto the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see Hurricane Georges making its way across the Dominican Republic and Haiti tonight. And coming up closer to home, you can see that swirling mass coming down off uh, Hudson Bay, producing wind that's coming across the open water of the Great Lakes and producing some cloud, and actually still producing a few weak showers. Now, most of the showers are off to the south and east of us, but there are a few cells coming off Georgian Bay. We may see the odd little sprinkle here by about 1.30 in the morning if they don't die out before they get to us. So maybe a sprinkle before daybreak, but through the day tomorrow, some sunshine and some cloudy periods. Cool temperatures for especially eastern and central Ontario tonight. Down the Ottawa Valley, 2 to 4 degrees. 4 in Peterborough and Kingston. 3 to 4 from North Bay down to Barrie. 5 to 6 from Toronto over to Niagara Falls. And for the southwest, 4 to 6 from Sarnia down to Windsor. With a mix of sun and cloud and that brisk northwest wind tomorrow, we'll see temperatures of 14 to 18 in the Godrich Windsor Corridor, 15 to Rondo the Golden Horseshoe, 13 to 14 for central Ontario, and for eastern Ontario, 12 to 14 degrees. Five-day forecast, a mix of sun and cloud tomorrow, a high of only 15 degrees. As we head into Thursday, we'll start off with sunshine, but in the afternoon, clouds gather. By the evening, expect some showers developing. They'll carry on into Friday. Then in Friday afternoon, with the cooler air coming in again, a high of only 18, expect some more showers. Saturday and Sunday, still unsettled with showers. Maybe some thunderstorms on Saturday afternoon as we get to 24, and cooling off the high of about 20. And that radar picture just on my left there, you can see some showers coming off Georgian Bay. That may trouble us for the next couple of minutes. Mark. Thanks, Harold. Now, a final look at our top stories tonight. Teachers and school boards still deadlocked across the GTA, so some York Region parents are talking about teaching classes themselves. The idea already at work at one place in Thornhill. Toronto politicians showed a demonstration of the stop stick, a device its makers say would help cut the risk of death and injury in cop chases. Police have laid charges against the man who was injured in Saturday's fatal pursuit and crash in Etobicoke. Tonight, the PM gives a half-hearted apology for the RCMP pepper spraying of the anti-Suharto protesters at the APEC summit last fall. Gretchen also may be called in front of a police commission investigating the incident. That is this edition of City Pulse tonight. Watch for updates overnight and more tomorrow at noon and 6. Join me on Cable Pulse 24 only for daily live nightly. And if you're watching on City, enjoy the movie. We'll see you later.